the great things about advertising music is how precise it is, how concise it is. I refer to it as being a comedian as opposed to being a screenplay writer. So if you can imagine if you wanted to take your best ideas, like a Whitman sampler, and put them all in one box, and that box would be 30 seconds long, that's a commercial. If you compress advertising even less than 30 seconds, and if you take away the words of the singing, and that's part of the assignment of, com of commercial composers, so you have to make an underscore as powerful, and sometimes only five seconds. So it's like if you arrive at a restaurant with your kids in tow, and they hand you the crayons, and a, you know, the, the, the table is covered with you know, paper, and you've only got a purple, and an orange, and a brown and you've got 30 minutes until the food arrives. You have to come up with a masterpiece with only three colors. And that's what advertising music is like. The most important thing, and the thing that I want to focus on today, is the first sound you hear. Because all of you know, remember I told you that your music goes out into ether anonymously, and it sits in someone's computer, and the music supervisor, or the film editor, or the producer from the agency, or maybe the creative team, which consists of the writer and the art director, they have playlists of their favorite stuff, and then they're also bombarded by libraries, and people who send them library music, which they can license for anything from $50 to $50,000. And there it comes pouring in. And those of you who have ever sat through a casting session by people who are busy, you know that casting sessions are often done on fast forward. And the version of fast forward in a casting session is that they listen to the first four or five seconds of the piece and they go, yes, no. Okay? It's just the way it is. So this company being an established ad music company in New York City, I think it was Duotone, um, they're smart. They start with a thing. You've got to have a thing at the beginning. Even if it's just, oh. The first sound you hear is absolutely essential. Um, then they go to the groove, they have repetitive, singable stuff, okay, that the agency usually gives you the lyrics, so you have to make that work. Then they have this thing called the donut. The donut is where the pastry opens up, and the voiceover can fit in and talk about the attributes of the product, or when it's available, or if it's not available on Sundays. Then you have more of the donut, which is the, the pastry part, that's your music. And then there's a thing at the end, which is often the logo or the mnemonic. Sometimes there's two there. But that's pretty much the ad formula. So intro, first three seconds, exposition of the situation, the problem, the storyline, whatever's going on, the new product. Middle section, which is sometimes in the music a breakdown. Do you know what a breakdown is? Uh, it's where you just kind of shut everything down to bass and drums or even just a, a pulse underneath. That allows the voiceover to speak. There's one other thing I think you need to always know. Those of you who are not Black Flag fans, or anybody who likes to go to uh, poetry sessions, poetry with music, uh, that's what commercials are, is poetry, sometimes good, sometimes not so good, with music. So you've got a working job there. You're accompanying the poet thing. My friend Terry says that every project she's ever worked on has been made better by going through the rigors of client scrutiny. Let me say that again. Everything she's ever done has been made better by going through the rigors of client scrutiny. And so the last point I'd like to make as to this introduction is that I perceive advertising as a consensus-driven art form. Now you're going to say, wow, Liz, how can you say that? I'm a composer. I'm like, you know, from the nine lively arts. I'm from Greece. I like want to go back in history and be fabulous. I want someone to listen to me and to listen to my music and say I'm wonderful. But that's not the way advertising music works. So if you're not used to working in a team, and if you're not used to taking direction, and if you don't have self-control, you'll have problems in advertising. Because you can't take it personally. Just make the revisions. Even if it's Pepsi revision 85, make the revisions. Make it good. Make, be sure you'll be happy to hear it on the air. But that's it, consensus-driven art form, meaning that 99% of the people who see Subway have to get some information about it and like the music. So that's why a lot...